Hello there, YouTubers, and welcome to another episode of Dr. Cassette's Workshop. Today we have a USB 2.0 to IDE or SATA converter. It's one of these things that uh, you plug your hard disk drive into and then you can uh, hook it up to the computer via USB. So if you have just uh, a random drive lying around, you don't have to put it into an external enclosure first. Now, it's kind of a handy thing to have. I do have a USB 3.0 to SATA converter. It's kind of a fancy thing that you can put on your desk. But uh, I don't have anything for IDE, so this uh, might come in kind of handy. Uh, I got it for 3 euro at a thrift store quite a while ago, and now first of all, driveless high speed. Well, it's not going to work without a drive, because that's what it's meant for. It's meant to be connected to a drive. So, <laughs> driveless is definitely kind of wrong. Now, what they meant to say is that this is a plug-and-play thing, you don't have to install a driver first. Um, well, there is that. Problem with this is, you've guessed it by the title of the video, the power supply. Um, let me just uh, plug this in and let's see if we can uh, get some sort of uh, symptom out of this. Well, it turns out this is quite a bit of an interesting problem even to diagnose. I mean, whenever I got the thing, I tried it out and it wouldn't spin up any hard drives, and I was like, well, okay, it's broken. Well, I now plugged it in, and as you can see, it does give you the uh, power indicator light, so it can't be completely broken, and in fact, it's not. I am getting 12 volts out of there, and I'm getting 5 volts out of there, if I measure it. However, it's still not able to spin up any hard drives. I just tried a bunch of them and it just doesn't work. So, I now have a resistor in here, 33 ohms, so that causes a significant current flow, which uh, should be something around uh, what these would cause when spinning up. Got a resistor, and if I now uh, hook up the scope to this, as you can see, we're getting a pretty significant amount of ripple on there, and our average voltage is uh, down to 3.8 volts on the 5 volt rail, so that's not going to be enough to uh, run anything. Let's check the 12 volt rail. Well, I guess we found the problem. As you can see, there is a huge amount of ripple on the 12 volt rail, and Instead of 12 volts, we're getting 1.3 volts, so something's got to be wrong. Well, I open up the broken power supply, and as you can see, this thing is cheap. This is cheap. It's not quite as cheap as uh, some of them are, but you can see there is not a whole lot going on in the way of shielding and, you know, and all that. I don't know, germanium diode in there, I don't know what they are doing with that. Uh, the core of the transformer is loose, so that's not good. So I said, well, you know what, we're not going to fix it, we're just going to throw it away. So what I did was I found this. This is another uh, 12 and 5 volt power supply that actually belongs to an external hard disk drive enclosure. And I thought, well, you know what, this thing looks to be just right. And it was. Um, now, I did have a bit of an accident when I opened this up with a Dremel tool. I, uh, <laughs> I Dremeled into the capacitor, so uh, that can go as well. Um, I did replace it, as you can see. I did have an almost identical device in my parts bin, so that wasn't a problem. I also Dremeled into this, but it doesn't seem to be damaged. Knock on wood. Uh, uh, what I did was I just soldered in the cable from the old broken power supply. There it is. It's, uh, I think it's a Molex connector, and that's what they are called. So now I can go ahead and uh, plug this in, see if it still works after uh, that Dremel action. And uh, then we can see if this manages to power a hard disk drive. 
I haven't taped the housing back together yet, but as you can see it does fit. And uh, unlike our last power supply repair, uh, on this time the strain relief actually does work. So that's good. Went ahead and checked the voltages. They are all right. I didn't get any of the voltages mixed up. So now comes the moment of truth. I got this old 80 gigabyte IDE Samsung drive. Let's see if it starts up or if it pops or if it still doesn't do anything. Let's go. Well, I'm not sure if you're able to hear that. This drive is very quiet. But it spins up and works. Might be able to hear that. So, I guess that means once I got this uh, <laughs> secured back together, uh, we have this... Uh, IDE to USB and SATA to USB adapter all back up and running. So, thank you for watching and see you again soon.